Welcome to Indres TV. Barcelona Publish its Q3 report today. And we are at the Barcelona's headquarters and with me here is Barcelona's CFO, Arjen Berent. And we are going to talk about Barcelona's result and other topics. Hi Arjen. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's start with the Barcelona's performance in the third quarter. How would you summarize it? Um, I would say it's good from a volume po point of view. Uh, it's probably not so good from a profitability point of view. Um, that we saw very good, let's say, volume growth. Let's say 49% in new build and 13% in, 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 in service sales. Mm. Um, so really, let's say, encouraging. We saw also good order intake growth. Let's say also if you look at the service part, let's say 27% service order intake growth and 13% and, and, uh, on the on the sales side. So, and that is very important for us because it's typically higher margins. Um, profitability, not so good. Why, why not? I would highlight, let's say, two main reasons. Uh, one is the, the, the cost inflation, uh, which is clearly, let's say, still around. Uh, of course, it, it shifts a bit, let's say, with different elements. Okay, it was earlier raw materials and logistics very much. Now we see it also in energy, where raw materials is a bit improving, so it's mm. a bit moving around. But cost inflation is still, still a topic. And actually, when what we have now delivered in Q3 is to a large extent orders that we had already booked before this cost mm. inflation acceleration started. That I think is one reason. The other reason I want to highlight is the is the business mix. As I mentioned already, let's say uh, sales on new built equipment went up, let's say 49%, mm. and on the service side 13%. And typically new built is lower margin than service. So in the mix, it has a negative overall impact on the profitability percentage of the quarter. Let's dive into more of these topics. Uh, energy prices are high, like you said, and we don't know how much time it will take there. So what kind of driver energy is in cost inflation at the moment? Could you uh, elaborate a bit? It's definitely a driver. Yes. Um, uh, and I would say, okay, particular, I would say Europe more. Mm. Um, of course, it's also uh, in other places, but Europe at the moment, when Europe tries to get, let's say, disconnected from the dependency of Russia and Russian gas, uh, of course, that's driving up, let's say, energy prices quite significantly. Uh, where we see it most is in um, supply side. Um, uh, suppliers that have a very high energy intensive production process, for example, castings and forgings. And here you think about engine blocks or crankshafts or propeller shafts, uh, which are, of course, using a lot of energy in the, in the production process. There we see it most. It is, though, let's say, a bit varying by supplier because it depends also very much on where the supplier is located. Uh, also in Europe, we have a lot of, let's say, different patchwork and energy prices. So mm. it, it's, a, it's a quite different landscape. And of course, the energy contract the supplier has, that is also a clearly a determining factor. So it's different in different places. But in general, I would say it's definitely, let's say, a, a pressure. How difficult is it to pass uh, the cost inflation to your customers? It's a challenge. And, mm. and um, we have also said earlier that um, when um, cost inflation started to really accelerate, um, you could say when the, when the war in Ukraine started, mm. actually. So let's say if you look at the order book that we had for new built equipment uh, at the end of Q1, uh, which is probably the most affected one, let's mm. say from cost inflation point of view, we had 2.2 billion euro order book for delivery this year and 1.2 billion euro order book for delivery next year. Mm. To go back to customers and say, okay, I want to renegotiate the price, which we have earlier agreed because of cost inflation, the succession rate has been zero, you could say. Mm. Here and there we could perhaps do a little bit, but it's insignificant. So to break open these contracts is, is very difficult. So to adjust prices for that, no go, you could almost say. And when you think about, let's say, transactional business, there, of course, we... You could almost say we are real-time online. So when prices go up on, on the cost side, we can also adjust the prices quite much faster because the cycle times are a lot hmm. uh, shorter, actually. Yes. Uh, many raw material prices have been falling, and uh, I'm wondering if the current trend might benefit Barcelona about a year or uh, some uh, to future. Uh, let's say raw materials have been coming down. Mm -hmm. Not all, but let's say some, some have been coming down. Uh, but I would say not radical enough. Mm -hmm. um, if you compare to, let's say, I refer to this order book, what I mentioned in the, at the end of Q1. Let's say the raw material prices are not lower than what we sold it for at that point of time. 
which mm. is not the case yet, then it doesn't benefit, right? So um, I think it needs to come down way further if we want to see a positive impact on that on that part of the order book. Even though there are many headwinds, it seems that there is a good momentum in energy. So what is driving the market at the moment? Uh, energy is driving, uh, or I would say the main thing that drives the energy market is the, is the transition to mm. renewables. And, and the more renewals, renewals, renewables, sorry, yes. which are being installed, uh, it also, let's say, generates, let's say, the need for storage in, the, in, the, in let's say, our battery solutions, but also balancing power. So, and when coal is being shut off, which we see happening in certain parts of the world, now it's a little bit, let's say, wobbly in, in Europe because of the mm. whole gas uh, discussion that we just had, um, that they, okay, they want to keep the coal running longer, but on the moment that you switch off coal, you need an alternative to back up, let's say, the renewables in case the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow. Mm. And that's where our solutions come in and that we see happening. Yes. Uh, what kind of expectation do you have in the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act? It is a big thing for storage, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And then, okay, it's a bit too early to really say, okay, what does it mean in the details? Mm. But I think we get that more clear uh, towards probably Q1 next year. Um, but it's definitely, let's say, a, 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 you could say a stimulus, because I would say half of the, the, the money made available by the administration in the U.S., is for, let's say, clean technology, right? Mm. And, and battery storage is clearly supporting that. So it's renewables. When you do more renewables, you need, let's say, uh, storage solutions as well. So it's definitely, I would say, good news for storage business. Timing is a little bit, okay, let's see how quick this goes. Um, I think it will go quicker uh, than, for example, in Europe, where permitting is still a bit, a bit of an issue and a delaying factor. In, in, in the US, it's much easier with, with permitting. So I, I do expect some positive benefits out of it. Uh, what about your profitability in storage business? Many analysts are asking about it. Hmm. Yes, we will not comment <laughs> on that. That is also what we have said to, to analysts uh, yes. earlier as well. Let's say uh, if you look at, at the rolling activity in, in, in storage, gross margin is positive. Hmm. Uh, and currently we are still at a negative uh, EBIT line. But of course, working hard to get that too to a break even and, and a positive result in the future. Yes, I understand. A few words about Voyage, which was last week announced to be integrated into marine power. So uh, what factors influence the decisions and what are you mm, uh, trying to aim for with yeah. this? Um, Voyage has been quite facing some headwinds. Mm. Uh, let's say, first of all, with the, with the pandemic, uh, and, and of course, Voyage was very strong linked also to cruise business, or a big portion of their activity is cruise related. Uh, and that, of course, has been dead more or less during the pandemic. Now, now it's on good level again, but let's say it has been really facing challenges there. Uh, and of course, also the, the um, um, retraction of Wetzel out of Russia. Mm. Uh, Voyage had two big important units in, in Russia. Uh, one being local operation unit and the other one being an R&D unit. Um, we have secured business continuity by also, let's say, transferring people and, and, and making sure that, let's say, we, we have the capability to serve customers. And I don't think customers have really faced issues with that. But let's say profitability-wise, we have still been struggling to get to this break-even point. Mm. And we now want to accelerate that by integrating it uh, deeper into, let's say, marine power and really combining, you could say, engine efficiency with propulsion efficiency and voyage efficiency. As the fuels of the future are more expensive than the, call it the current fuels, they call it the fossil fuels, mm. there is a need to, let's say, get all the efficiency improvements you possibly can combined together um, in one offering. So fuel efficiency, no matter it, whether it comes from the engine or the propulsion system in hydrodynamics or for let's say the voyage optimization, wherever you can gain efficiency, that's important for customers going forward. Because the fuels will not be cheaper. The fuels will be more expensive than the current fuels. That's true. Uh, final question. Varsila announced a week ago or two weeks ago that it will supply the gas-powered engines to the Japanese market, uh, which is a re relatively new market to you. So how significant this order is and can we expect more? Um, it's a very important order. Let's say we actually are in this contract supplying 10 Wetzilla 34 SG, so gas engines, uh, to this site to replace actually 
a combined cycle gas turbine. And that's of course really a milestone. And that proves also that let's say the, the need for flexibility in balancing power is, is critical. When a country or a certain region or a grid, let's say moves more to renewables, you need the balancing power. And of course generating, let's say 100 megawatt with a turbine or having 10 engines, which you can start stop in minutes, that's a lot more flexibility and much more efficient use of, of, of let's say the power available. So really, let's say a milestone for us, a good proof point of our technology and do we expect more? Mm, yes, yes, we expect more. Let's say as, as, the, as the road towards renewables also continues in Japan, uh, we anticipate let's say, more, more coming out of that. That's good to hear. Thanks for your answers and time, of course. Thank you very much.